If you're a wearable kind of person, there's no denying that the Apple Watch is one of the best smartwatches money can buy. But does it live up to the hype? Is it going to be forgotten in your bedside cupboard along with your PC format collection? Well, let's find out. The annual Apple events draw a lot of attention, with this year being no different. Unfortunately, the mobile phone lineup was just underwhelming. There's no doubt that the star of this year's show was the Apple Watch. And for a few reasons, which we'll get into in a sec. When it comes to the unboxing, Apple never lets you down. In the box, you'll get the watch itself, which comes in a neat little pouch, your strap of choice, the magnetic charge cable, and a power brick. Taking a closer look at the watch itself, um, the button-wise, it's the same as its older brothers, with a few minor changes. There's still just a single button and the digital crown, but the crown now sports haptic feedback, which is such a fantastic addition. The mic and speaker positions have been switched around and the speakers are much louder. Finally, all the Series 4 watches have a ceramic back, which helps radio waves penetrate for better overall connectivity. But the best improvement has got to be the display. The Series 4 has a 30% larger display and it is spectacular. The bezels are much smaller and the screen goes almost to the edge of the body. To accommodate for the larger display, the watch now comes in two new sizes. The smaller skew is up from 38 to 40 millimeters, with the larger one growing from 42 to 44 millimeters. I was a little concerned that this would make the watch feel a bit bulky, but the slimmer body and smaller bezels means it is much more comfortable. Another thing that has grown is the price tag. The base price for the Series 3 started at $279, and the Series 4 weighs in at a whopping $399. This is probably the worst thing about this device, is that the price jump is quite significant. The first thing you want to decide on if you're going for the Apple Watch is if you want cellular or not. Check out our article to find out more about iPhone compatibility between the cellular and non-cellular options. For $100 more, the cellular version will give your watch LTE capabilities and a little red ring on your digital crown. Having the cellular option allows you to do a few things without needing your iPhone close to you. You're able to make and receive phone calls, use Siri, navigation, and use Apple Music. This use case is great for runners that might want to leave their iPhone at home and still want to be connected. If you have some AirPods or wireless earphones, you can also pair them directly to the watch. In my case, I always have my phone on me and didn't really need the cellular version, but go according to your use case. Now it's time to choose a color and a finish. This is where you are absolutely spoilt for choice. If your pockets are really deep, you could fork out up to 1500 bucks for a stainless steel case with ebony Baronier Leather Single Tour Deployment Buckle by Hermes. I've probably mispronounced it, but damn, 1500. That's, uh, that's, that's quite stiff. But for the typical person, you're down to either aluminum or stainless steel, the latter being the more expensive of the two. Then you need to decide on the strap. The silicon sport strap is easier to clean, quite durable, and will probably be better if you perspire profusely. The Velcro one, however, is much more comfortable. This is not just because it's softer, but you can get the exact size that's comfortable for your wrist versus the holes on the silicon strap. There's also a Milanese loop, which is made from a smooth stainless steel. This gives your watch a classy look and also fits quite seamlessly as it's magnetized. Now, a couple of pro tips here. Firstly, you can trade in your old Apple Watch at the Apple Store for up to $225. They will also just take the watch itself and let you keep your bands, which is great because the bands are interchangeable between all the generations. A second pro tip here is that you can find some really good quality generic Milanese loops on eBay. This one, for example, I grabbed for about $8 and it is nearly indistinguishable from the original one. If you really can't decide online, you can book an appointment at the Apple Store and try out some of the variations. So, in a nutshell, First choose your connectivity, then your case material, your strap type, and finally your strap color. And you should be good to go. If you're coming from a Series 3, you will immediately notice not only how much slimmer, but also how much more comfortable the watch feels on your wrist. Apple has also added some new watch faces, some of which they actually recorded in a studio, which is just ridiculously Apple. The flames and the water faces, for example, are not CGI. Gotta respect them for that. The featured one, however, is the new Infograph watch face. It is absolutely packed with complications. We get a new gauge type of complication which can help display data in a gradient type of format. Some of these are really useful, like a battery complication, and some of them like the UV index is, well, not sure if I need that, but hey, it's there. One major downside to the new infograph watch face and the new complications is that developers need to update their complications from the ground up in order for them to be displayed on the new watch faces. The weird thing is that Apple themselves don't even support some of their own apps, 
like the podcast app, a little frustrating if you relied on them. If you do want them, you will need to use one of the older style watch faces with the older version of complications until developers support the new ones. The biggest drive this year from Apple for its new watch is aimed at health with some amazing features. Not only does it monitor your heart rate throughout the day, but it will alert you if it detects unusually low or high heart rates. This is great because high or low heart rates could be a sign of a serious condition, the symptoms of which aren't recognizable by the average person and could possibly lead to a condition being undiagnosed. If you've got a heart rate monitor attached to you at all times, this could help you seek necessary medical attention and even have a record to show your doctor when you go and visit him. Probably the biggest addition when it comes to health is the introduction of the electrocardiogram or EKG slash ECG depending on where you come from. Now EKGs normally require like 12 electrodes being attached to you and provide signals to a special machine to be inspected by a medical doctor. Electrocardiograms can be used to investigate symptoms such as chest pains, palpitations and among other things can help detect things like arrhythmias. This is when your heart beats too slowly, too quickly or irregularly. The problem with regular electrocardiograms is that you need to go into a hospital to get it done and your precious little ticker may not behave how you're expecting it to when you go to the hospital. Having an EKG capable device on your wrist at all times might be able to solve this problem. Is this going to be useful? I guess time will tell. In my speaking to some medical doctors, they assume that the data provided by a smartwatch will only supplement a diagnosis made by a medical doctor, meaning you will still need to take a traditional EKG at the hospital, but I guess that's the idea anyway. A smartwatch won't be a replacement for a finely tuned medical grade machine, so don't be so quick to buy the Apple Watch if this is your only use case. The EKG feature won't be available till later on in the year, in the US and possibly even later on in other countries. There are other features that make the Apple Watch Series 4 a compelling buy for some people. The new accelerometer and gyroscope can detect if you've taken a hard fall. It will even call emergency services for you after 60 seconds and send a message to your emergency contacts. So if you have a loved one above the age of 65, fall detection makes a lot of sense. Other things that may also come in handy for seniors will be the walkie-talkie feature, which can, at the touch of a button, get you in touch without having to place a call. Walkie-talkie is available for any device running Watch OS 5 or later. It's kind of like a push-to-talk feature, but it's just a childhood dream to be able to speak into your watch like James Bond. Finally, for all the fitness fans, the Series 4 is at the top of its game when it comes to helping you track your activity and workouts. In my testing against some of the gym equipment with built-in heart rate monitors, the watch is around 1 or 2 beats per minute off and most of the time it's exactly the same as the machine. The only thing not present in the Apple Watch is sleep tracking, which is a biggie for some people. You can however purchase a third party app which will allow you to track your sleep but I don't see why Apple don't just include it. This is possibly the only area where the Fitbit is slightly ahead. Fitbit's ecosystem allows you to track your food, workouts and sleep all from within a single app. But in every other department, Apple is miles ahead. A few more pro tips here. I found that while doing exercises like the bench press, my hand would press the digital crown and Siri would activate itself annoyingly. This is easily remedied by changing the orientation and having the crown on the other side. If you're a boxing or MMA fan, there's no way your watch is going to fit under your hand wraps or boxing gloves. Fortunately, Scotia make a rock solid range of devices like the Rhythm 24, which is able to connect to your Apple Watch directly. This way, you can take off your Apple Watch and still have your workout tracked through the workout app using the heart rate sensor on the Scotia device. There's no doubting that the Series 4 overshadowed all other announcements this year, and it's easy to see why. If you're fortunate enough to have other Apple devices, the watch is a perfect addition to your walled garden. My only concerns, some of which are small, are the growing price tag, still no Android support, limited complication support at the moment, and lack of sleep tracking. Other than that, notifications, audio control, and activity tracking are at your fingertips. Having tried many other smartwatches, the Apple Watch is simply the best one money can buy. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to check out our article on makeyourself.com and subscribe to the channel for our tech reviews and other useful content. Peace. If you've made it this far in the video, you know we'll be giving away one of these spectacular devices. So enter the code WOZNIAC in the competition to get yourself more entries. Thanks again, everyone.